Hi everybody, my name's Kristen. I am one of the carnivore keepers here at your Akron Zoo. I am also one of the red wolf keepers, so today I'm going to talk to you guys just a little bit about our red wolves. So red wolves actually used to be native to most of the eastern United States. Um, currently there's only about 20 of them left in the wild. So we have a very strong program with the red wolves here in the zoos. We really want to do our part to preserve their population um, in hopes that one day we'll be able to put red wolves back out into the wild. So um, here at the Akron Zoo, we have um, a couple of red wolves. So we have Wyatt and Juno. Um, Juno actually just came to us about a month ago from the Chiha Zoo. And uh, we just introduced her to Wyatt last week and they're doing exceptionally well. So um, with all carnivores, we wanna make sure that they get along right away. Um, with all animals really, when we do introductions, we wanna make sure everything is smooth. Uh, especially with our carnivores though. So we had a little bit of a process going through this, um, but they did great right off the bat and we were able to speed right through it. So our red wolves, they, as you can imagine, are carnivores. Um, they do get meat every single day and they also get um, different kinds of kibble that we will supplement their diet with. Uh, this stuff provides a lot of extra fat and protein. That's very similar to what your dog would get at home, but our guys are uh, much more active and they spend a lot more time outside, so uh, they need that extra fat and protein to stay healthy. Our red wolves do have access to their exhibit at all times. Um, at night, they also get access inside to their building. Um, that is a heated and cooled area, uh, but actually the red wolves spend all of their time on exhibit, um, even in inclement weather. So if it's like pouring down rain or snowing, they're still gonna be outside sleeping because that's what they would be used to in the wild. Um, so here at the zoo, you've probably heard about a lot of our enrichment and training programs. Um, we do a lot of enrichment with the red wolves. Um, we actually don't do very much training though so since this is part of a program where we want to release the wolves back to the wild at some point we try to maintain their wild instincts as much as possible so we don't want to really interact with them and get them used to people feeding them or providing them fun toys so um, we provide very natural stuff for the wolves so while other animals might get boomer balls these guys are going to get a big scented pile of mulch or we'll cut a whole bunch of branches down for them um, so we still want to enrich them but we want to make sure it's not very human related so Waya and Juno are getting along really well um, they have not always been together Waya has been here for about a year now um, um, he came in with his brother and they get, got along great and everything was fine when they were here. And then suddenly one day they decided it was not fine. Um, so we had to separate those two wolves. Um, Mohi, his brother, went to another zoo and then we had Waya here by himself for a little while. So we really wanted to bring in a companion for Waya. Um, wolves are very social animals so we didn't want him to be by himself for very long. So we brought in Juno from the Chiha Zoo. Um, she is going to be four or this month. Um, why is going to be six this summer um, and you can easily tell them apart. Uh, Juno is much smaller. She weighs about 20 pounds less than Waya. Um, Waya is about 70 pounds um, and she also has like bunny ears so she's very distinct to tell apart. Um, they've been getting along great. Uh, Juno has been following Waya all around the exhibit. Uh, she's kind of been jumping on top of him at some point so um, Waya has been very tolerant of her just telling telling her when he's had a little bit too much, um, but otherwise they've been getting along great. Here at the zoo and throughout zoos across the country and even the world, we participate in what's called species survival plans. So we have a survival plan for each species, um, but especially the ones that are very endangered. Um, this is to maintain a healthy population within the zoos. Um, so we have a very special one for the wolves uh, because we do want to uh, restore their wild population at some point. Um, so there is someone who's in charge of each species. Uh, sometimes it can be a small committee in charge of each species and they will identify every individual of that species in the country and figure out who will go with who. So looking at this they look at genetic compatibility, um, space in different facilities, um, sometimes they'll even look at personality. So if we have a very dominant animal uh, we don't want to bring in another very dominant animal. So um, sometimes that even stuff like that can play into it. So as part of the species survival plan for the red wolves, we did bring in Juno as a breeding recommendation. So she is compatible with Waya um, for genetic 
purposes. So hopefully one day we'll be able to breed them. Um, typically their breeding season is um, right at the beginning of March. So we're kind of past that for this year, but hopefully for next year, we'll see more of that activity. So we get a lot of questions about the wolves and the coyotes being right next to each other. Um, a lot of people actually mix up the two of them. Um, we wanted to have both of them here as an educational piece to show how they are different and um, the conservation value behind the red wolves. So the coyotes and the red wolves do look very similar, uh, which is actually one of the reasons that red wolves can be so endangered. Um, people will often mistake them for coyotes and will try different methods to try to get them away or off of their property. So as most of you know, uh, red wolves do howl. Um, we do have um, a lot of howling that goes on here at the zoo. Uh, they will all howl together. Uh, it's a big sign of communication. Um, the coyotes, they'll actually make more of like a yipping noise. So um, if everybody starts howling, you can really tell apart who's the wolves and who the coyotes. Um, one of the funniest things we have with our wolves is every time any sirens go by, they will all start howling. So um, they probably think it's another pack of canids, but um, you hear an ambulance or anything, you're gonna have howling wolves and coyotes up here. Thank you for joining us on the zoo's lunch and learn today about red wolves. Um, hopefully we can get you guys back here soon to meet Juno and she's excited to see you as well.